This is the lesson video for chapter 11, part 2. Now we go to section 4 of this chapter. This section is going to cover creating tables with columns specifications, creating tables from subqueries, altering data table definitions after creation, dropping and truncating tables, create tables. This is the syntax for creating a table. First we have the create table uh, keywords. Uh, then we have the schema which is optional. When we have brackets that means it's optional. We have the table name. We have uh, organization and heap. That's also optional. And then we have the column name, data type, and default expressions. Uh, default expressions are optional. Here we have an example of creating uh, a uh, short version of an employee table called EMP. And let's go to SQL Developer. In SQL Developer, we're not for this last section, for section four, we're not going to cover, we're not going to be in the HR schema. I sent you a message through Blackboard with a username and password. You're going to clear this is your own personal schema. You're going to create a connection to it and you're going to work uh, uh, with this schema for, for this section. So I already have my schema here. I have the HR schema and the student section. I created one for me to, so I can show you how to use it. Okay, so we're going to create the EMP table. So we have, um, I'm going to select my student schema. And we're going to wait a little bit while it connects. I already created the connection setup. So I've saved my password. So everything should be ready to go. We're going to wait a few seconds. Connection has been reset. Okay. Again, I'm using my student schema. You should have your own. Every student should have their own, their own username and password for their schema. And for this section, we're going to use that uh, that schema. We're not going to use the HR schema. So we're going to create uh, a table. Let me show you first before we create the, the table that we don't have any tables here. In this schema we don't have any tables. So we're going to create our first table. We're going to create uh, EMP. It's going to have an EMP NO for number. It's going to be a number, four spaces, no decimal. We're going to have a name, Vartar, a hire date, which will be a date. We're going to have a salary and commission right. so let's go ahead and create this table so I'm going to run the create statement and we got a message that the table was created we're going to refresh our schema and now we see our table created All right. and remember this wasn't here so uh, so now we have a, our first table. Now we're going to create another table using a subquery. So from the first table, EMP, we're going to create another table just like it. We're going to create a copy. And this is using a subquery. And basically, this subquery you select star all columns from EMP. You can select individual columns uh, to create to get a subset of the columns of the EMP table. So I'm gonna um, close this. Um, I'm gonna refresh, and we only have one EMP table. 
So we're going to create another query. We're going to create another table from an existing table. All right. So I'm going to run this. So we got a message that it was created. And I'm going to go to tables and I'm going to refresh. And now we get our EMP copy. And those should be exactly the same. Now we're going to make changes to the table we just created. We're going to add a column. Right, we forgot to add a column or after the fact, you know, we need to store extra information. So we're going to add a column. So we're going to add a column to the EMP table. And if we go here, we're going to we're going to uh we're going to see that we have 1 2 3 4 5 columns. So we're going to add job ID and it's going to be a number and it's not going to have a precision or scale. So we run it and it was created. It was altered. So we go to the EMP, we refresh and now we have the job ID that we just had. Job ID that we just added. Alright. We added job ID. So now we have that extra extra column. Now we're gonna make a change to a column. We're gonna change commission and we're gonna change the precision and scale. So for commission, let's see. Commission has a precision of seven and a scale of two. That means it it has to be seven. It can be up to seven digits, including the decimals and two decimal spaces. So we're going to change that seven. We're going to change it to four. All right. So I'm going to run the statement. So it was done, it was altered. So now we're going to refresh. And I'm going to go and click on the employee again. Uh, refreshing. And close this. Now, now the change is reflected, and we have a uh, precision of four. That's what we did. No change. We change. We change from seven to four. Okay. Now we're gonna drop a columns. You know, we have a column in a table that we we don't need. We don't use. We want to save space. We want to be more efficient. We want to delete a column. Okay, so we're gonna delete the commission column, All right? So when you delete in uh, in SQL, is drop. Okay, so remember, drop keyword means delete. So we're gonna first. I'm gonna expand, and we have the commission. After I run the statement, it should be there. So I'm going to run to delete. So we got a message that it was altered. I'm going to click on employee and do a refresh. And now we don't have the commission uh, column. Now we're going to mark a column as a use. Okay. Okay, we're going to run the statement and it was altered. 
so we're marking this column as unused you can go ahead and uh, mark columns in, as unused uh, to many tables many columns and then there's a command that will delete all unused columns and we will cover that later alright we marked a column as unused in this case it was job ID now we're gonna rename a column we're gonna rename hard date to recruit it so hard date is gonna be renamed so now we looked at hard date go to employee refresh and now it says recruit it okay so we change a column name. Now we're going to mark a table as read only. That means uh, you cannot insert records. Uh, you can only read. You can only use select statements to read uh, data. So we're going to alter the EMP table and we're going to set it as read only. Okay, it's been done. So now the EMP table, you can only read data from it. Now we're going to delete tables. Uh, again, we're going to use the drop keyword, and drop means delete in Oracle. So I'm going to go to here to my file explorer, refresh, and we still have EMP and copy. So we're going to go drop EMP first, and it was drop, and then refresh. There you go. It took a little while to update, but it was finally taken off the file explorer. So now we gotta go to EMP copy. I'm gonna run. We got a successful a message. I'm gonna go to tables. I'm gonna refresh and now we don't have any tables. So I created a table, I added a column, I renamed columns, I marked the table uh, as unused, I changed uh, data type, I modified data type. So those are the things you can do with tables. Now we go to section 5. This section covers the types of constraints, defining constraints, and working with constraints. Constraints are rules. They enforce business rules and guarantee that the data conforms to the entity relationship model. The types of constraints are unique, not null, primary key, foreign key, and key. I'm sorry, check. First we look at the unique constraint. Uh, the value must be different for every row in the table. Uh, for example, employee emails. We want our employees to have individual uh, emails, email addresses. Okay, so no two employees can have the same email. So we create this rule in the table, in the email column, where no two employees have the same email. Now we look at the not null constraint. Sometimes we want to collect data and we don't want to leave uh, fields empty. So when we create a person record or an employee record, we always want their first name. Everybody's got to have a first name. We always want a last name. We don't want a record without somebody's last name. And we also might need the date of birth. So if we request a date of birth, we want everybody's date of birth. We don't want to leave a person without a... Um, a date of birth value. 
Now we go to the primary key constraint. Uh, this is to, to locate a single row in a table. So that's usually the first column and we that column uniquely identify each row. So if we have examples like em employee ID, no two employees have the same employee ID and that 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 employee ID is going to identify each row. We also have another example, driver's license number. No two people have the same number. We also have student ID and book ISBN. Now we go to the foreign key constraint. And this is important uh, when in a relational database because you want to make connections between tables. And the examples that I have, department ID in the department's table is linked to the department ID in the employees. So let me show you that. I'm going to go to the HR schema for this. And employees. Uh, and department. So here we're linking the department ID and the departments and employee table. So here we have the employees table. Again, this is, I'm going to the HR schema and we have department ID and this links it to the department ID in the departments. So if we have this employee, we have the department ID, uh, we can get the rest of the information from the department's table when we link it to the department ID. So that this is called a foreign key constraint. Again, this is very important when relating your tables. Now we have an, uh, the second example, it's job ID in the jobs uh, table to job ID in the employees table. So again, I'm going to the HR schema and I'm going to the jobs and we have job ID in the jobs table and we have a job ID in the employees table so we'll make this link and we make when we make that link we make a rule called a foreign key constraint okay these two are linked Now we go to the uh, check constraint. Sometimes we want to make put checks rules in our database so we get the the correct data. We don't get the uh, trash for data. For example, we want when we ask for somebody's age, we don't want somebody's age to be negative 20. All right? So we put a rule that a person's age needs to be greater than 0. We also have uh, another example which is shipping date and order date. We don't want the shipping date to be less than the order date. All right? That will be in the past. How can we have how can we have a how can we ship something that we have hasn't been ordered? We also have a uh, we can throw in a date of birth check that we want everybody that was born if we we're, if we're collecting uh, date of birth from employees, we don't want an employee to give us a date of birth from the 1800s, all right? So we want uh, we want to make sure we we put a check a rule to get the right date of birth or you know a, a valid date of birth. Also, another example would be gender. If we only want to collect M or F, we want to put a rule that we only accept those two. So we would put a check rule. Now we go to defining constraints. Here we're going to create a table and at the table creation we're going to include constraints. We're going to include a primary key constraint. We're also going to include a check constraint and a not null constraint. So we're going to go to SQL Developer and we're going to do that. Okay, I'm going to go back to my student schema and I'm going to be in uh, my student schema. We don't have any tables. I'm going to refresh 
I created some tables and I deleted them so we don't have any tables at the moment I'm going to minimize this a little bit so we can see we're going to create we're going to use the create table keywords we're going to create the table called DEPT I guess short for department we're going to have the first column and if you notice I created uh, I separated the columns data types and constraints this is to uh, to create readability for the user so it would be easier to read and understand so when you submit homework assignments please do that okay sometimes it'll be hard for me to read if everything's mixed up all right we have two columns uh, the apartment number and the apartment name we have const uh, data types of our char 20 it'll be 20 in length we have a uh, number two uh, two spaces for the apartment number and we have the first constraint which is the key uh, every table uh, there's some exceptions but every table should have a primary key con uh, constraint so uh, here we have the uh, department number as the primary key so no two rows should have the same uh, department number right so the keywords to create a constraint is the keyword constraint and then we have uh, the name of the constraint this is very important because if you don't put a name uh, the system would come up with a number for your constraint and it's not very descriptive descriptive so it, it'll be very hard for you to uh, identify your constraints when you want to delete them or modify them or things like that so on your when you create a constraint name you put the table name and then you put the column name where you want that uh, constraint here we have we're gonna be it's gonna be on the department table that we just created it's gonna be on the department number column and if you remember we have a department number column and then the suffix PK for primary key make sure you do that when you do your homework assignment uh, you're gonna be deducted points if you don't name your constraints properly and then finally the primary key constraint this is the check constraint we start with a constraint keyword the table uh, name the column name and the CK for check uh, suffix and then check keyword and the rule that we're going to put here for the check constraint is that the department uh, number is between 10 and 90 so that means we cannot put 5 we cannot put 95 91 so make sure uh, when uh, you enter records uh, or when you enter records to this table you don't use the, uh, you don't violate that rule because it'll give you an error message or won't let won't take a record and finally on the on the second column we're gonna have a constraint and it's gonna be table name column name the column name is the name if we go here that's a column name so and then we put not no keywords so we don't want this uh, column to be empty so I'm gonna run it and it was created we got a message that it was created. We go to our tables in our st in our student account. Oh, I pressed the wrong one. Uh, if we refresh, we have the table, and we here we have the structure. And here, when you click on the table, you get the structure. Uh, and you go to constraints. And when they do this for the first time, it'll take a little while. So now we have the constraint names here. We have the type, and we have more constraint information.
Okay. So it's very important that you give your constraint a proper name. If you don't do this, it it'll give uh, it'll give you a uh, uh, if you don't give a name, uh, the name is optional. If you don't put a name, it'll give you a number, and it'll be very hard to identify your constraint, especially when you have a lot of constraints. Okay, so that's how do you find your constraints. You click on your table. Let me just close it again and show you again how to do that. You click on your double click on your table. Uh, you get the columns. You get the data. Right now we don't have any data. And you get the model, and then you get your constraint. And it takes taking a little while. But you should get your constraints. There you go. Again, the names are very important, and the naming the table, column, and the suffix. Now we go to create the EMP table, and this table has a bunch of constraints. So let me go to SQL Developer. So this has two, four, six, seven columns. Uh, we have a constraint. We have a primary key constraint. Again, most tables should have a primary key constraint. There's very few exceptions. The second constraint uh, is a not null constraint, so we don't want the employee name to be null. And here we have a foreign key. This foreign key references uh, the same table. It references column uh, manager. So we want a manager ID that is also an employee number in the same table. So this table references itself, one column. The manager column references the employee number. So we're going to have an employee in the manager column, we're going to have an employee number also. We're going to have a constraint. Um, we have a foreign key constraint. This uh, constraint references the department number, references the department. The department number in the department table. Okay. This links two tables together. Right. That's very important. You're going to need that for your homework because you want your tables that you create uh, to be linked. Now we come to the email column and we want this to be unique. We want uh, we want uh, no two employees to have the same uh, constraint. And And then we come to the last constraint. We have the check constraint, and we want date of birth. We want the hire date to be greater than the date of birth uh, of the person. The person needs to be 16 or over uh, to be hired. So those are all the constraints. Uh, we're creating the table. We're putting the constraints at the ta at the table creation. All right, so we're going to run this query. So now we have we created the table with constraints. We're going to go to our tables in our student account, and we got the employees table. We got the columns, and if we click on the table. Uh, okay, and then I go to constraints, and we get all the constraints that we created, that we added when we created the table. Right. So now we go work with constraints. Sometimes you need to add constraints after you created the tables 
so there's a way to do that we will use the alter table keywords we name the table and then we add the constraint in SQL developer we have to modify the constraint again we use the, the alter table keyword the name of the the name of the table we have the add keyword the constraint name the the name for the constraint and here we're adding a primary key constraint for employee number and I think we already done that yeah we already done that so this is adding another primary key uh, with a different name I think this is just giving you an example I'm not going to run it because it uh, it'll probably give me an error message uh, probably not because it's a different constraint name but I'm not going to do it so if you um, if you want to play with your constraints uh, but this is the way you add constraints after you created tables here at the end if you want to after you're done uh, testing this table if you want to drop them it's if you do it in your in your student uh, schema you don't have to drop them you can leave, leave them there for later or you can drop them practice uh, recreate the tables again and practice creating the the tables with constraints this concludes our video lesson for chapter 11. Thank you for watching. This is the end for the lesson video for chapter 11 part 2.